Today, we're gonna do a little bit of vehicle maintenance. My old 2007 Chevy Trailblazer is in need of a new set of spark plugs. That's what we're gonna do today. It's really not all that hard. I'm gonna show you how you can get it done. I'm Jeff, you're watching Home Built Workshop. Make sure you stick around. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Home Built Workshop. I hope your day is going great. Today is vehicle maintenance day around here. What are we working on? We are working on a 2007 Chevrolet Trailblazer. It's got the 4.2 liter inline six cylinder engine. Need some new spark plugs. It's been a while since we've changed them. One thing that's kind of crazy about these is they're really 100,000 miles before you need to change them. Now I've changed these before. When it hit the 100,000 mile mark, this particular vehicle of mine just turned over to 200,000 miles. So it's time for another set. Let me bring you along. We'll get these things changed. It's really not all that hard. If it's something you've been needing to do and maybe you've been putting it off, don't worry, just take your time. I'll show you exactly how to get it done. So what we've got here, we've got our spark plugs. Like I mentioned, these are 100,000 mile rated spark plugs. I can't even wrap my head around that quite yet, but these are an iridium plug. The plug we're putting in is these AC Delco, just kind of the factory brand. This is the 41-103 plugs. If you have a different vehicle, make sure you get the recommended spark plug, but for this particular vehicle, GM 41-103 Delco plug. Got my 5.8 spark plug socket. We've got a little bit of dielectric grease we're gonna use inside the boot once we get to that step. That's about it. I'm gonna grab a couple of tools. We gotta to remove a few parts and pieces. So let's get out there under the hood. I'm working outside and we got rain coming in later. So I gotta get this done. Let's do it. So our spark plugs are located underneath this air box here. So we've gotta get this stuff out of the way so that we can access the coil packs that are, well, right here. You probably can't see it, but I can feel it right there. This has to come off. We're gonna disconnect our air intake pipe, and then we're gonna disconnect it from the throttle body here. This is a couple of hose clamps. Now on this vehicle, I've, there's a little bracket right here that connects to the underside of this air intake. Now this is a K&N aftermarket intake. There's a little bracket here that bolts to the side of the motor. Probably can't see that, but it's got a 10 millimeter bolt that goes right into the side. Just gotta take that loose. That's gonna give us a little bit of space here so that I can get this out of there because without that, it won't, it won't clear. Go. Now we got that off there. I don't need to get it too far out of the way. There's still a hose connected here, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. We've got a couple of 10 millimeter screws. There's one here, one back here. I thought there was a third one. Maybe not. Let's pull those out real quick. These two 10 millimeter bolts are what holds the air box to the top of the engine. So by removing these screws, it's gonna let us get this air box out of the way, which we have to do in order to be able to get to the coils underneath. So I've got the two bolts out of this side. It is only two. For some reason, I thought it was a third. We've got our hose clamp loose over here. So now we just pull that off. There is a little vent hose or something right here that we gotta remember to put back on this port here. So for now, we're just gonna leave that. Oh, we've got, we've got a little uh, wire clip over here. Here I'm just using a small pick to open the little plastic holder to separate the wire from the intake. Pop that guy out of there. Now we can get this out of the way. And right here are our six coil packs that we're gonna be removing one by one to change the plugs. I am gonna pull this air filter off because now's a good time to give it a wash. I know this is gonna be sitting for a little bit of time. So I can clean this, let it dry while I'm changing those plugs. It is pretty dirty anyway. So I got my air filter drying in the sun now. If you're curious as to how to clean an air filter like that, this is a K&N in particular. I've got a couple videos on cleaning both the cone style filter as well as the flat element, more of the OE style filter. I'll put links down below in the description if you want to go through that process. We're not going to cover that here. We're here to change some spark plugs. Now it's time to grab our 10 millimeter. And we're just going to one at a time go down through, pull these coil packs, change out the spark plugs. If we take a quick look here, I'll show you what we have. We've got our coil pack electrical connector. We're going to need to undo this without breaking the plastic tabs. Our process is going to be 
disconnect the coil pack, remove the 10 millimeter, pop this out, pull the spark plug out, put in the new and reverse all of that for each one. But before I start taking things off, I'm noticing just a little bit of debris and stuff down there. I don't want that to fall down into the spark plug hole. So before I take anything loose, I'm gonna grab an air hose and just carefully blow all that crud out of there just so that we have something a little bit clean. I think we'll cover this with some rags as well. Rags, just to close up that throttle body. Now we'll blast that out with some air. These coils have this little light gray locking tab on there. Don't try to pull those off until you pop that tab up. You could, you could break something. We don't want to break anything here. Pop that little tab up. Once you have this little gray clip popped up, that locks a little tab in place that runs down through this little hoopy part. That's a technical term. If you reach up under the bottom, you can feel the end of that tab and you just press that up with your finger and it releases it. You can see the little, the little tab there. Maybe you can see that. You just pop that up and it comes right off. Now we'll grab our 10 millimeter. Loosen up our coil. There is a little trim piece here, at least on mine. You can remove that if you want, but you can work around. It's not so bad. I think it's easy enough to just work around it. And we can just wiggle our coil loose. There it is. Now there are two different styles of coils for this particular vehicle. This is a 2007 and it's my understanding that this is the newer style. If it's maybe an 02 to 05 or maybe 06, you'll have a little bit different shape to the coil, but basically the procedure is gonna be the same thing. The connector may be a tiny bit different as well. I'm not 100% sure I've not changed the plugs on an older vehicle, but just know that there's two different styles, and if yours is older than an 07, then it may be a little bit different. Now we're gonna grab our compressed air again, blow that out just to make sure there's no debris in there. And there's our spark plug that I changed 100,000 miles ago. That's crazy. I'm gonna use one of these little cheap spark plug gapper tools just to check the gap. These are supposed to be pre-gapped. I believe the gap is 42 thousandths. And that looks just fine. Now we'll just reinstall it. It's really important that you use an actual spark plug socket that has the rubber insert in here because you need that little rubber insert to hold the spark plug in place so that you can very carefully lower it back down in. And it's also absolutely imperative that you start the new spark plug by hand. Never just grab your ratchet and start twisting it in you do not want to cross thread that spark plug. That would be really bad. I always turn it as far as I can by hand. Then we'll torque it down to spec. I always check my socket when I pulled out 
I've had the rubber little insert stick on the plug. I always make sure that that thing actually did come out of there. Now we can reinstall the coil, put a little bit of dielectric grease in there. You don't need a, a ton. And then we just drop it back down on there. Make sure it seats fully. Get the bolt started. Snug that back down. And first one's done. Now I'll just repeat that process five more times. Five? F five. Five more times, and then we'll see if this thing fires back up. The only one that's a little bit trickier is that number six cylinder all the way at the back. And that's really because the firewall's in the way. You just have to use a shorter extension on your ratchet and you have to work on a little bit tighter conditions, but it's fine. Just take your time. I'm gonna get this done. Since we already covered the process on the number one spark plug, I decided to just time lapse the rest of it since the process is exactly the same as we work our way back. As a quick recap, our process is going to be to first disconnect the electrical connector on the coil. Remember, you need to pop that little gray clip up, then reach inside the plug with the end of your fingertip and squeeze up on the end of the connector, which will release it from the coil. Then you can loosen the 10 millimeter bolt that secures the coil to the top of the engine. Now carefully wiggle the coil while pulling up gently and it should pop right off of the spark plug. At this point, it's a good idea to take a little bit of compressed air and blow any debris out of the spark plug hole before you use your spark plug socket to remove the spark plug. Before installing the new plug, make sure you check the gap to verify that it's set where it's supposed to be. After verifying that the gap is set correctly, you can then use your spark plug socket to lower the new plug down into the hole and screw it in by hand until it won't go any farther. Then you can snug it down with a ratchet. Now add a little bit of dielectric grease to the end of your spark plug boot and pop the coil back into its bore and secure it with the 10 millimeter bolt. Now all you need to do is reconnect the electrical connector and that spark plug's changed. Once you have all of the plugs replaced, then you just have to reinstall the air box and the air filter assembly in the exact reverse order that you removed it. Just tightening up this last clamp here. We're about ready to fire this thing back up. I've got the air box all back on. Exactly the reverse order of removing it. One thing that you may have differently, unless you have this exact same K&N air filter system, you will have to remove the air box, which is over here. That's not a big deal. There's three bolts, I believe one at the front two corners, and I think the third one is right here. You just remove those, then you can pull the air box out of there. That'll let you get this tube out of there. Again, mine's set up different because I have this different K&N filter style on this, but just remove the factory air box to let you get this out of the way. And then you can just do exactly the same thing to change your plugs. Just doing one last double check here, making sure we have everything tight. Don't forget to put this little hose back on the underside of the air box when you reinstall this air box. I've got everything tightened down. All I need to do is reinstall my freshly cleaned air filter and we can fire this up. While we're here, might as well check the oil. With everything buttoned up, we're ready to fire this up. Let's jump in. We have no engine lights. Sounds exactly like it did. I still can't believe that these spark plugs 
are actually designed to go 100,000 miles in between changes. That's just crazy. But we got them changed, right on schedule, ready for another 100,000 miles. Maybe. I don't know if this will hit 300,000 or not. So that wraps up this project, changing the spark plugs. 2007 Chevy Trailblazer also applies to basically all years of the Trailblazer with the inline six. And also a very similar, if not identical process will be on the four and the five cylinder version of this engine, which came in vehicles like the Colorado and other things that are similar. Basically the same engine, it just has less cylinders. So I imagine Maybe not exact, but I imagine the process is very similar, if not identical, but this one's done. Hopefully that helps you out. If you need to change plugs on your Trailblazer, don't be afraid to do it. It's not that hard to do. Take your time. Make sure you don't break any electrical connectors. Just go slow. You can get it done. Hope you found this video helpful. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button as well. So you get notified when I do other videos. I do lots of different videos here on the channel. Hopefully they're helpful for all of you. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.